It's September 2023, and I'm visiting Cape Disappointment Washington State Park. Cape Disappointment has a rich and interesting history. In particular, the Lewis and Clark Expedition reached this area in mid-November 1805 and got their first view of the Pacific Ocean. For the current visitor, the park offers stunning views of ocean beaches, soaring headlands, old-growth forests, freshwater lakes, and saltwater marshes. I was fortunate to get a campsite right on the beach with a direct view of the ocean. This took a little planning. I had to make the reservation back at the earliest time possible in April. So of course the thing to do was to go out on the beach and I went out on the beach many times during my stay. The weather during my visit was quite variable, ranging from sunny blue skies to dark skies with heavy rain and sometimes very strong winds. No matter the weather, the landscape remained interesting and beautiful. It's always great to visit old lighthouses on the coast, and the Cape Disappointment Park has not one but two old lighthouses to visit. By walking north on the beach from my campsite, I get a good view of the North Head Lighthouse. It's the newer of the two lighthouses and was built in 1897. It's a 65-foot tower perched 130 feet above the ocean. There's a trail that allows you to walk up to the lighthouse, and a little later in this video we'll take that trail to visit the lighthouse. On my beach walks, I frequently saw pelicans flying in groups above the shoreline. They're easy birds to identify with a very large body and a very long bill. Most of the time I saw the pelicans flying above the beach but as shown here, in a few cases I saw them resting on the sand. I next wanted to visit the older lighthouse in the park. It's called the Cape Disappointment Lighthouse and it's located in the southern part of the park on the Columbia River. It's about two and a half miles from my campsite and a lot of that's on campground roads. So I set out on my bike to cover the distance and also using the bike gave me a good opportunity to see more of the park. As I leave the camping area, I'll note that I'm in camping area B and that the A, B, and C camping areas are on the west side of the park, immediately adjacent to the ocean. This area is wooded and the campsites are all nicely spaced. I'm biking on one of the main park roads headed towards the park entrance. As I bike along the road, the landscape changes from trees and shrubs to a more open area and a wetland. You can't see it from the road, but Lake O'Neill is located just out of view to the left. The decamping area is located along both sides of the road here. The decamping area is much more open and less private than the A, B, and C areas. The decamping area is adjacent to Lake O'Neill, and many of the campsites have a nice view of the lake. Straight ahead, just beyond our view, there's a beach on the Columbia River. I'm going to bike down to the beach for my first view of the Cape Disappointment Lighthouse. To get to the lighthouse, I needed to bike east and then bike up a road that heads up onto the rocky promontory above the Columbia River where the lighthouse is located.
The Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center is located near the lighthouse. Unfortunately, I didn't get any video from inside the Interpretive Center. It's then about a half mile hike from the Interpretive Center to the lighthouse. Much of the hike winds its way through a lush coastal forest. After about a quarter of a mile, the trail descends a bit and offers a view of a beautiful little inlet with the ominous name Deadman's Cove. It received the name in 1853 when the ship Vandalia sunk at the mouth of the Columbia and everyone aboard was lost and some of the dead bodies drifted into the cove. The final section of the trail to the lighthouse is uphill on a somewhat steep paved road. The Cape Disappointment Lighthouse was the first lighthouse built in the Pacific Northwest. It was completed in 1856. The lighthouse had a serious limitation. It was not visible to ships approaching from the north. That problem is what led to the building of a second lighthouse, the North Head Lighthouse. The trail continues a short distance beyond the lighthouse and at the end of the trail, there's a great view of the area between the north and south jetties which shelter the mouth of the Columbia River. At the end of the trail, there's a Coast Guard observation station which allows monitoring conditions at the Columbia Bar. The bar occurs where the river's current dissipates into the Pacific Ocean and sediment is deposited. There are often large standing waves here, and the combination of wind, waves, and current can be dangerous to ships of any size. Thousands of large ships have been sunk in and around the Columbia Bar, and it's earned the title Graveyard of the Pacific. Today things are quiet at the Columbia Bar. It's a great place to watch large ocean-going ships navigate their way into and out of the mouth of the Columbia River. I then traveled north about three miles from the lighthouse to the trailhead for the Discovery Trail. At the trailhead you can go either east or west. Initially I walked to the east out onto a wooden bridge that spans a wetland area. After getting a good look at this marsh area, I walked back to the trailhead and got on my bike to head west towards the ocean. The trail heading west goes through an area known as Beard's Hollow. The trail then curves to the north and eventually reaches the Pacific Ocean.
It was raining lightly for most of this bike ride, but at this point it began to rain heavily and I gave up on trying to film the remainder of the bike ride. On a different and sunny day, I returned to the north part of the park to visit the North Head Lighthouse. The short trail to the lighthouse is marked for walking only, so I parked my bike and continued on foot. As the lighthouse was built in 1897, it clearly was well constructed and has been carefully maintained. There are tours of the inside of the lighthouse, but unfortunately I just missed the last tour of the day. I think it'd be really interesting to see the inside of this lighthouse. Well this wraps up this visit to Cape Disappointment State Park. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.